As with any new environment, such as a new home, you need to be comfortable moving around and changing the look to make it suit your style. You want to make it my blender. Windows are a key feature of the blender environment, and managing them, expanding, contracting, creating new windows, merging windows, and so on, is a key component of this. This video explains Blender's window management style. It's at once familiar and a bit different from window management in programs like Microsoft Word or Excel. I think the differences are quite innovative. Once you get the hang of working with Blender windows, you should feel quite comfortable with them. However, there's a bit of a learning curve, something that I hope I can make uh, faster with this video. Before we start, I'd like to elaborate on one of the comments a viewer posted. Namely, that although there are many Blender 3D videos published on YouTube, Vimeo, on Blender.org, and on other sites, sometimes things get confusing. Menu items change, panels are added, changed or removed, names of functions and capabilities are changed. For an example, you look for a tutorial on, say, soft body physics or adding a custom texture. You're working in 2.62. Tutorials may exist, but they're based on 2.49, 2.52 beta, or perhaps an earlier 2.4x version. You find a tutorial that looks interesting, and you try to follow along. But if the tutorial is based on 2.49b, it's almost guaranteed you become a bit confused. All my future tutorials will be based on Blender 2.62 until further notice. In this way, if you're also using 2.62, these problems won't occur. Obviously, Blender is continuing to be enhanced. New features are added, bugs are fixed, and other features of the environment change. That's virtually guaranteed, and it's a good thing. The last thing I want to do is to suggest that the Blender developers stop developing so I can make video tutorials. For learning purposes, if you follow along in 2.62, you should be able to get up to speed with this version. As Blender is upgraded, you should also be able to follow along seeing the developer's log link from the flash splash screen and learn about the new features yourself. Who knows, when Blender 3.0's Make It So interface is released, I may not I may need to do to re I may need to redo all these tutorials yet again. With that being said, let's get started. In the previous video, we explored the Blender 3D default scene. What's interesting is that the scene has five different windows information Outline, Properties, Timeline, and 3D Viewport. Some of them, like the 3D Viewport, take up a lot of screen real estate. Others, like the Outline window, take up only a small amount of space. You might think that this is all the space you have to work with with these windows. Here's a simple technique, magic keys, that will allow any of these windows to expand to give you as much space as you need. You basically expand the window make your changes and restore the window back to its original space. The magic keys are control up to expand a window to full screen and control down to restore a window to its original position. Actually, the, thing, the way I think it works, at least on my Windows PC, is that if the window is in its original position, either control up or control down expands the window to full screen. And similarly, if the window is full screen, either control up or control down restores it back to its original position. I'll do this for the 3D viewport, the outline window, and the properties window. You can resize a window by left clicking with the mouse and dragging on its border. Since the windows are rectangular, you can expand or contract horizontally by left clicking and dragging on the right or left border. And you can expand or contract vertically by left clicking and dragging on the top or bottom border. There's another magic area that's the key to splitting and joining windows. It's this triangular ridged thumb grip that's called a splitter widget at the upper right corner of each window. Let's see how to split the 3D window to create a vertical split. First, find the splitter widget. It's a bit hidden because it's ridged gray on a gray background. When the cursor turns into a cross, you found it. When you do, left click and drag the cursor horizontally. When you release the left mouse button, you've created a vertical split. Now create a horizontal split. Position the mouse at the original splitter widget, left click, and this time drag the cursor vertically. 
When you release the left mouse button, you've created a horizontal split. You can join two vertical windows with the same width or any two horizontal windows that have the same height. To join, you have to get to the splitter widget again. Left click and drag to move the cursor from one window to the other and make it a joined window. A large gray arrow shows the direction of the change. When the left mouse button is pressed, you can drag into either of the windows to join it to control the direction of the split. Here I'll join two vertical windows into one 3D window. Each window has its own tool panel and button to change the window type. I'll change the window to a text editor window. Now I'll change the window back to a 3D window. There's yet another little magical icon in the 3D window. Look for the little plus sign on the right of the window. Click on it. What displays is the properties panel for the object. This is the same group of properties that you get when you click on the cube in the properties window. You can see the location, rotation, scale, and other properties of the object in focus, which in this case coincidentally is the cube. There's also a splitter widget in each panel of the properties window. By left clicking and dragging you can move the panel above or below other panels. In this way you can customize the panel to your liking. This works only within the panel. You cannot move the panel to another panel or to another window. As I said, there's a bit of a learning curve. But once you get the hang of it, window management in Blender 2.62 is, is pretty slick. You should be able to make your Blender environment comfortable to fit your work style. Happy blendering!